Hello everyone, welcome to the second presentation of Session 6 Real World Data. My name is Sasa Namini, I'm a research associate and a PhD student at the Chair of Traffic Engineering and Control at the Technical University of Munich. It is my pleasure to present this ongoing work conducted by a great team of um, researchers at three different universities, together with my friends Gabriel and Lucas, having the support of Professor Klaus Bogenberger here at TUM and Professor Monica Menendez at NYU in Abu Dhabi. Before I start with the presentation, um, I would just like to point out that this is a recorded video, but I'm also in the audience, hopefully not the only one, and at the end um, I will be happy to answer your questions if there are any. Now, the title of the presentation is Generating and Calibrating Large-Scale Mesoscopic Sumo Network, and here we have just an overview. First I will talk about the motivation, um, then a little bit about supply and demand, introducing our calibration framework, and then I will show some results that we got and concluding with some remarks and suggestions for the future work. Now the introduction, why do we even bother to have a citywide traffic simulation? There is an extensive list of applications that actually could uh, be conducted better if we have a citywide traffic simulation, for example, if you want to introduce some congestion pricing or apply perimeter control. A very common example here, here is to have a low emission zone in the city center. We are interested to know then what will happen to the rest of the network. Or uh, perhaps a network-wide traffic management, if we have a rerouting strategy at the freeway authority and then the urban um, traffic control operators want to apply signal optimization, or if there are some roadworks, accidents, or bad weather at different locations in the city at different times, then what is the optimum traffic management strategy here requires a network-wide um, traffic simulation. Parking management and, and, and managed with the parking right facilities. Also, if we want to introduce new public transport lines, uh, what will happen to the capacity and route choice to the rest of the network. And recently some emerging solutions, uh, more cities are trying to be green by introducing bike lanes and removing some park spots on some main arterials. So what will happen to the car traffic if they also introduce some bus lanes or HOV lanes or uh, want to study the impact of AVs on the overall traffic in the city, that all requires a citywide traffic simulation. For that, we need basically supply and demand any traffic simulation needs two components. Supply here is the road network, but the question is that which road network? If we extract another road network of a city, here we see the example for the city of Munich in Germany, the size is huge and we have so many small and residential or unclassified roads that uh, make the route choice and the calibration problem too difficult. Now, the first thought that is that, okay, we really don't need residential roads because this is not where we want to apply traffic management or this is not where congestion happens, so we are really not interested in that roads. So we just kick them all out. And here is the, the left screenshot. But then the problem is that in the city center, we really need them because it has a denser urban structure and really a lot of um, origin destination of the trips happens there. So. Um, they carry more traffic if we compare a small road in the city center to an outskirt a part of the city. So then with the second thought would be, okay, let's just have the residential roads in the city center. But that still includes a lot of um, roads that really don't carry any traffic. And including them just complicates the, the route choice and the calibration of the model. We came up with a, an algorithm that just filters out the unnecessary roads based on the metric uh, from graph theory between the centrality, which I will just talk about later. But we thought, okay, we don't need to just uh, kick out some roads based on their location or types. We just can look into their value to the network. After supply, we need some demand. Um, it could come in two formats, basically. It's either time varying OD pairs uh, just we split the network in different time uh, traffic analysis zones and then we just have for each time interval the number of um, travelers for each travel mode that could go from A to B. Or it could be an activity-based demand model. Here we have daily plans for the agents and then they just go from their home to work locations and then travel across the network. The good thing about Sumo is that it could handle both um, demand um, types 
most of the existing tools could either uh, take with uh, work with OD or uh, activity based but plus for sumo here that could really work with both of them after having supply and demand um, we just have this very general overview of doing calibration for any traffic simulation we feed that information to a traffic model it could be analytical or simulation based and then we really need to evaluate the performance of that model um, based on some goodness of fit and then the calibration component which is normally an optimization algorithm takes care of uh, fine-tuning of the input parameters in this presentation our supply is a directed graph that we get from OSM our demand comes in time varying OD formats that we got from some colleagues and it's in gray here showing that we don't really focus on demand in this presentation it's a sumo user conference so we thought we better focus on the supply side and the mesoscopic model of sumo which we're using for evaluating the performance we use the notion of macroscopic fundamental diagram or mfd in short and for the calibration we use a sequential model-based optimization algorithm which i will introduce later now let's talk a little bit in more details about the supply i will show how we do generate the network for the city of zurich in switzerland here is the workflow basically we start from left that green box we go to osm and here we have a number of tools that we could extract the bounding box from osm i use the osm get uh, python script uh, my favorite one and then we feed that osm file to net convert to generate the network for sumo here we extract also the plain node and edges and feed that to r uh, we use igraph package to generate that directed graph and then we keep the strongly connected part of this graph by filtering the, the remaining it. And in this strongly connected part, we calculate the number of shortest paths from and to non-residential roads. So non-residential roads mean all other um, OSM edge tags that are not unclassified residential and living streets. Then we calculate the between the centrality and weighted by a free flow travel time and then rank all the residential roads and just keep the top 30%. Here we just get the edge IDs that we want to keep and again use netconvert providing that edge ID file and then get our final network. For the city of Zurich, here you can see the result. On the left, you see the raw network from OSM including all the edges. And on the right, you see the result of network as you can see, a number of nodes and edges reduced by almost 50% and a number of signalized intersections actually did not change significantly, showing that the algorithm that we applied considers arterials with traffic signals to be important for the network and keeping them. And this is also just uh, the settings of our net convert configuration file in case someone is interested how we generate the traffic lights or keeping the uh, ramps for guessing through or no, no internal links are included and so on and so forth demand uh, we're modeling the morning traffic in zurich here we were lucky uh, the colleagues at eth institute for transport planning systems um, provided us a demand scenario they're working on multiple scenarios and uh, have done a great job and they were very kind to give us one of the um, demand scenarios which is well representing the demand in zurich we took it we convert the format uh, for sumo readable format and then uh, we just used it uh, very easy uh, task to do here now about the calibration um, here i really like this code saying that we reap what we sow uh, shows that the more effort we put in calibration um, the happier we will be at the end with the results but unfortunately this is not what happens in practice the results of the horizon 2020 project called multitude uh, basically shows that in practice calibration is based on trial and error uh, people just try manually to change some of the parameters or uh, they just look into the network and by in, in the GUI and see, okay, they expect some congestion at some certain parts of the network. If they see it, then they just assume the network is calibrated or they just often use quote unquote default parameters. 
and grant that for to the calibrated model, which is um, basically meaning that they do not do calibration at all. One other challenge and about calibration is that it is mathematically highly underdetermined, um, so it's very complicated to solve the problem. And many of the unknowns in the sets of equations coming from the demand side because we have thousands of ODs for a CD, and for the supply side, it is often modeled by a speed density function for 10 to 15 or 20 types of edges. So the number of unknowns is much uh, smaller than the demand part. One problem here is that this approach originates from calibrating the models for freeways. Uh, but in urban uh, networks, we, we really don't have that smooth speed density function. That could be one challenge. Also, we don't have usually information about traffic signals. I mean, if we are lucky, we can get a PDF saying what is the algorithm, but implementing that is quite challenging. Having that in mind, and after looking into the mesoscopic model of SUMO, uh, unfortunately, I cannot explain it, but it's a time headway based queuing theory approach. What is important here is that the parameters for the mesoscopic model, here you see the screenshot on the left, are global. Uh, but the net urban network uh, is heterogeneous, meaning that there are different uh, types of roads with different capacities, the speed limits, number of lanes uh, involved. So we really cannot model all of these different road types with one parameter. Considering the limitations, which I just mentioned in previous slide about not smooth um, uh, speed density function or urban networks, we came up with an idea of looking into the aggregated traffic variables, also known as the notion of microscopic model method diagram. That might help us to converge. And about MFD, in perhaps 20 seconds, uh, on the left you see some um, flow occupancy relation from three different uh, loop detectors from city of Zurich, and as you can see, they are not that smooth. But if we aggregate them, we get the plot on the right that is much more smoother. Here we lose maybe some information about the congestion, but this could help us to convert because it's much more smoother function. And it also contains some information about the control across a part of the network. So we thought that uh, this could be used as our objective value to calibrate. And then for the optimization, we are using sequential model-based optimization. It's from the class of uh, surrogate model-based, meaning that considers SUMO to be a black box and does not assume there is a gradient-based uh, approach. And then um, for the objective value of the optimization, we use dynamic time warping. It's a multidimensional uh, time series metric uh, for comparing the similarity between a multidimensional time series. We also consider the RMSE and flow and density just to compare. And for the set of input parameters, we have 10 to 12. Uh, we consider slight changes in demand by scaling it with a factor. Uh, here is very important uh, just to point out that it's always good if we calibrate supply and demand simultaneously because they're interacting with each other. So it's not uh, the best approach to keep one fixed and change one only. So we also consider to some extent the demand part. But again, since our focus was the mesoscopic model of SUMO, we haven't done much work on uh, demand for this presentation. Here is the overall workflow of the optimization algorithm. How do we iterate uh, 400 times? Uh, I really don't have time to go through the steps. I think after the presentation, you can have the video so you can pause and go through the steps. Now some preliminary results that we got. Um, here are the MFDs. The blue curve shows the empirical MFD averaged over several days for Zurich, and the orange one is from SUMO. The plot on the left shows the results of the mesoscopic model using the default parameters, basically not having any congestion. And on the right, we have the results of iteration um, 351, for some unknown reason, SUMO crashed um, at that iteration, so we couldn't converge, but still we have uh, quite acceptable results, just underestimating the capacity a little bit. Um, here we have an example from um, one uh, random edge before and after calibration, uh, comparing the traffic counts from the measured one and the simulated one. 
using counts is always tricky because um, counts are not uh, necessarily the best uh, data to calibrate against especially after congestion appears they just show the capacity and not the um, demand or traffic dynamics on that edge but in practice this is also usually the only data source that we have with 15 minutes aggregated traffic counts uh, what we wanted to show that okay if we calibrate against mfd on an edge level we still have calibrated some of the edges more on that uh, we looked into the normalized rmse of all the edges and as you can see some edges are good and some edges are terrible uh, the rmsn below one uh, we have just two examples on the top here uh, you see the time series of flow over um, uh, the period of time that I mentioned, each time interval is made of uh, three minutes. So we have 140 from 4 a.m. to 11 a.m. And the two one on the bottom are just terrible. But since we have calibrated against MFD, the average of the two orange curves on the bottom is very similar to the average of the blue curves. So the optimization algorithm is not basically complaining. That's one limitation of uh, calibrating against MFD. But it's a trade-off between computation time complexity and the application that we are looking for. If our application does not require to look into individual edges and just requires, for example, the perimeter control, the overall traffic state, then we really don't need to calibrate each individual edge separately. Now to conclude, uh, we basically had um, three contributions. The first one was how we create that uh, network from OSM by filtering out the unnecessary rows. And then we looked into the uh, mesoscopic model of SUMO. Luckily, the number of uh, users uh, is increasing as we heard on Monday. So we are looking forward to more questions on the user list about that. We considered um, supply related parameters and just a minor um, scale factor parameter for demand, but this could be a, a point to study in future. Um, but the results suggested that um, for MFD-based application, the calibration is quite good. One uh, main um, challenge that could appear in this process is that if we get the network from OSM, there might be unnecessary bottlenecks that could significantly affect the results, but we wanted a solution that could be transferred to any city. So we really didn't want to manually adjust the network. For future, we have empirical data for um, other cities. Um, so we are trying to find out if there is a relation between the MFDs and the sets of um, calibration parameters for the supply side. Uh, we also try to consider now calibrating demand on an OD level and not on overall level by just one factor, but factoring each OD matrix separately. And that's also what we consider in future. And the last one is just a wish list. Uh, uh, I think it's already an issue on GitHub to make the mesoscopic model parameters based on edge types and not uh, global parameters. Thank you all for listening. This was a bit longer than 15 minutes, but still below 20 minutes. So uh, we can still have a couple of questions if there are any. Thank you very much.